So I've been kind of waiting to talk about this as a Jets fan because honestly, the whole thing has kind of been a little weird how it's just been handled in the media, but it's time to talk about the attendance issues to start the 2023-2024 season for your Winnipeg Jets because it has been rough and it is national news all of a sudden. And, you know, with the, we knew that attendance has been down. You know, last year it was down from to about 14,000, the above was the average. You know, that's definitely down from where it was selling out every game. But to now, it's the lowest it's ever seen, 11,000 to start this year. We start the year off with the lowest ever, and three games later, you get the lowest game ever in Jets history down there after already setting that record. And it's not getting any better. And this comes as well when you look at the attendance of every other league uh, team in Canada right now, and yeah, it's not very good. A j massive, massive drop off for things, and it's become this massive national news story, and you know, everyone's talking about it. And today, Mark Chipman had a sit down with Darren Drager and did a you know 20 minute interview almost talking about this whole attendance thing and all about the team because relocation 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 has been everywhere in the headlines since this has started this was since the start of the season pretty much and you know i put out this tweet earlier about a week ago asking to hear from you guys out there from jets fans what your reasons were and there were a plethora of different reasons that you know we're all kind of where i was the same thing ticket prices this the entire economy as itself the downtown core the product on the ice you know management everything you could think of you know going back the last three years with covid and you know to where we are now with everything was being said by you guys and it's true these are the exact reasons why there's just not one specific reason that has led to this as a result and it's not only the winnipeg jets that are suffering from this if you look at league attendance to begin every team regardless of how big we're talking about the biggest markets everything's down a little bit right now now that's not an excuse but that's just the state of the economy right now in north america now i'm not going to be getting into politics and i'm not going to get into the economy because that's not my area of expertise and i would not dare to try to explain this in that regard but that being said, as a hockey fan, as someone who's spent so much time in the city, in the downtown core and all around it, I got to say that, you know, the, re the what the fans are saying is all these reasons, you know, it's kind of what Mark Chipman was saying in this interview. And, you know, it was not as corporate as I thought it was going to be, if that makes any sense. And it felt really genuine. And there were some moments where it felt like he almost teared up talking about what it was like you know, 30, 40, what, 30 years ago, plus 30 plus years ago now when the original Jets left and became the Arizona Coyotes. And you, you feel that. And it's funny because here we are talking about this. And in my opinion, the only real reason that relocation is being brought up so much in the first place goes back to the season ticket holder video that they had released last year talking about this and showing the Jets leaving and being like, hey, if you don't buy tickets and support this team, well, crap, you know, it's going to not work out really well for us. And it might happen again. We might leave. And that's terrifying to think about and also really annoying as a fan, as someone who would live in the city and everything else, because you think about that. You think about that time. You see how emotional Mark Chipman is in this talking about that time, de describing it as the heart of the city being ripped out. Yet he and his marketing team made a video taunting that idea to the fan base that it could happen again if you don't support. So this whole situation is just really funny because at the end of the day, yes, the attendance is down. Yes, it's scary. Yes, there are over 4,000 plus empty seats so far to start every home game for this season. That's including the home opener. That is including Pierre-Luc Dubois' return. That is including a rematch against the Vegas Golden Knights, who we played last year in the first round. These are all big marquee matchups you'd think would draw for an attendance, especially to start the year, but that's just not what we've seen. And I just, at the end of the day, I don't know what solves this. I don't think anything solves this quickly. And I don't think that it's panic mode. It's just funny that all of a sudden now, because, you know, the product on the ice isn't necessarily what it should be because of the lack of direction, it feels like. And then to hear Mark Chipman come out in this interview and say that they're, you know, conf they're, they're a cap team. You know, they spend the cap. They invest money into this team. They have money invested into downtown, the city, all the stuff that we know about is true north, uh, as, what they do for as a business. Yet that being said, you, it, this whole thing just, it's funny. It makes me laugh. I, can't, I really can't help it. It's just crazy that they say all this stuff, but then you look at the product on the ice. You know, yes, they're a cap team, but you're playing a terrible Blake Wheeler who look at him now with New York. You're paying him all that money. You're paying Nate Schmidt $6 million and you're scratching him. Like, it's not necessarily money well spent onto a product that is, you know, woo, and exciting that's going to get people to come. If you want fans to come in Winnipeg and it all, in 
And the, with the, uh, the economy being the way it is, even with the ticket prices being the second cheapest in all of Canada, Winnipeg also has, you know, some of the lower side of minimum wage and all these other things that affect how what people have to spend in disposable income. And Mark Chipman talks about that. But that being said, if the product on the ice isn't top notch, like it has been in the past with it also, you know, the team being a lot better than where it was now. And also the fact that they were the new hot thing in the city, everyone wanted to go. Now that that's worn off, the team isn't as good as it was five years ago. And they're not really showing any clear direction. You know, here we're signing guys, we're keeping players, but we also, we're not playing the prospects that we're talking about in this video as the OCO. We're not talking about these exciting things that we have. We're not talking about all this stuff because we're not playing these kids really. And you know, it's just, it's, we, it's all this stuff, all of these things we've talked about as fans over the last like three to four years, it all kind of has come together into this attendance issue because there's so many things pointing at why it is the way it is. Because let's be real, the Jets, you know, like I said, even with the second lowest ticket prices, if people aren't happy with the on ice product, they're not going to spend what little disposable income they have to go to an NHL game, especially with, for $13 beers and not a lot of real promotion put into anything. You know, like, let's be real, Jets games haven't really changed a lot in a decade, and I love going to them because of the crowd, but even then, the crowd has gotten quieter because people can't afford to go to games as much, and also just the on-ice product has fallen off a little bit. And it's just, it sucks that that's where we are right now is this, because we've seen all these warning signs leading to this, and management chose to ignore it, and then now a pandemic hits, you know, it hits the wallets of a lot of fans, and let's not even forget to talk about the fact that Winnipeg has the lowest corporate season ticket holders at only 14 to 15 percent. Um, you look at everywhere else, like it's, it's 85 in some places, like it's insane. So when the fans aren't happy with the on ice performance, the fans are losing money because of the economy, and nothing really is exciting to want to draw them back to a game like we've talked about. This is going to happen, and. I'm not blaming Mark Chipman, I'm not blaming Chevy, because there's too many things going on to just blame one person. But with that being said, I don't necessarily know what fixes this. I think a good start is, you know, trying to win and trying to move more pieces and adding more to this team. If you want to sell that message, I think you have to move a lot more and be a more active GM if you're Chevy Dayoff. We've talked about that again, I'm not going to go into too details now, but it's just... There's lots of things that need to fit, change this. You need to show the fans, for one, that you are committed to winning and you're going to improve this team even more because let's be real, to start this season and we know what these guys are going to bring because we've seen it before, this team probably isn't going to, you know, some, you know, turn a lot of heads, I would say. I don't think they're going to be terrible, but I don't think they're going to be, you know, oh, the Jets are definitely Stanley Cup contenders. I think they're going to be fighting for a wild card again, probably, and maybe third in the, in the Central. Like, let's, like, okay, like, I'm not trying to get into a whole season output here because it's early, but I get that being said, let's be real. We got that excited for the same shit that we saw last year. You know, outside of Velarde, who is injured right now, and I follow, who's been great, and Kupari, who shows a lot of potential. Even then, Billy Hinola's hurt, like just all these different things. Like the team, for one, management needs to commit more to this team and improve this team if they want to sell the message of winning. And they're also going to need to do a big, 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 big thing. And that is, is going to be trying to get the fans back. You need to do something that creates some hype within there, you know, like I go to lots of Canucks games out here on the West Coast, right? Canucks have 80s themed night. They have, you know, 70s themed night. They have college nights. They have, you know, so many. I can't even think of all of them right now. There's so many different themed nights on just random game, home games that, you know, cheaper tickets, special food items, like, you know, come early for, you know, happy hour or, you know, performances like during, I don't know, just something that's different. You know, you have to do something to draw people in, especially with younger generation of people. Like everyone knows that. Look how people are. Everyone wants these flashy games. Look Look at the be look at the highest attendance rates in the NHL, and, and in any sports league, it's these places that have an amazing fan experience, you know. And that's because they know they know the value of what that you know that 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 that, that translates to. And I just think that the Jets need to do a better job at appealing to more of their heart of their fan base, you know, not just the family side of, you know, people that go. Because let's be real, the Jets games are very, very family family friendly. I'm not talking about playing crazy music or, you know, just getting people absolutely hammered, but look at the Bombers side of things, right? The way the Bombers do their pregame, the way the Bombers have cheap alcohol, the Rum Hut, the Beer Snakes, all these things that have been incorporated into that side of the Bombers fan base. The fact that they can still sell out every game and nothing games says a lot about how they have a draw to bring people into that awesome experience. They're considered, they are, they're not considered, they are the loudest and best fans in the CFL. And that tr could easily translate to the Jets if they allowed that type of energy and that type of hype 
you know, to go over there and to, you know, do better at drawing people to the games, just creating a better atmosphere than what they have now. They've toned down so many things. So many ushers will tell you to be quiet. So many season ticket holders, you know, run that building. And I get why, like I said, the fans, season ticket holders, part of those, they control it. That's the fans. So then they're, it's not just corporate side of things that they're not giving that much feedback. All their feedback from season ticket holders probably means a lot to True North because it's all just common fans spending all their money that they can, all their disposable income on these tickets and they need to do a better job and not just appealing to those types of fans and appeal to everyone the common fan that just wants to go have some beers have a great time and watch his hockey team try to win a game and sometimes the Jets games they just feel too pricey and just too out there for people to just casually go to on a Thursday night or a Tuesday night and that's why attendance will continue to drop unless they just do a change and try to bring people back you know they can't just keep throwing out the same thing and being like oh it's the economy because it is the economy but you also need to do something to draw people in because in other places like look in Vancouver I know Vancouver's economy is even worse right now when it comes to everything than Winnipeg's and that being said the Canucks do a great job of drawing you know new fans and just casual people to their games because you can't have to remember it doesn't matter if you know everyone when there is a diehard fan you got to get casuals and new people in because that's revenue and that's what you know keeps a team in a city for a long period of time is just everyone knowing about the team everyone being a going to the game and enjoying themselves at the game not just hockey fans and i think the jets need to do a much better job at appealing to that type of fan and person to get them to come out to games and grow the game more and you know get more people into it but again that's just my thoughts I've been rambling for a little bit, but I've been wanting to share this stuff for a while. So here's kind of my take on it all. And we're going to have to see how this progresses. Because again, this isn't wah, panic mode, but yeah, I had to talk about it. Everyone's talking about it. You know, and I just wanted to share my thoughts on it. And even then, it, my thoughts are messy because this whole situation's messy. There's not just one clear reason why it's happening. And it's not just Winnipeg specific, even though the media is trying to make it seem like it's a huge problem for Winnipeg. So they have the lowest, but you have stuff to remember, the smallest building. So again, another element of all of this but we're not going to talk get too much into that yet. So thank you so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. As always, if this is your first time checking out a video here on Peg City Hockey, make sure to subscribe to stay up to date with all things Winnipeg Jets because I'm definitely sure that this will continue to be a narrative all season long if the attendance continues to be, you know, in the low 10,000s to 12,000 regions. So we'll see what happens if it's where it stays. But if that's where it is, definitely people keep talking about this. So stay, make sure to subscribe to stay up to date with all things Winnipeg Jets. Peace, love, and positivity as always. Go Jets, go. I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out. Bye-bye.